All right, well, it's been a while since I made one of these, so I figured I'd show you that I hadn't fallen off the face of the earth. So as you can see, I uh, tore it apart again. Worked on this driver door. Got the old one off. I still got to pull the mirror, and I still got to drill a hole for the mirror on the new door. So the new, new door is mounted and somewhat aligned, and the glass installed and the latch installed and all that good stuff. Um, it's still not perfectly aligned and I'm still gonna have to do something with it. It's better than the old door, but it's still not perfect. So my rocker alignment down here is much better. Let's see if I can get a shot that decently shows it. There we go. So that is much better than it was before. I don't know if y'all remember it, but it was kicked out like to here before. It's a ways. The back is a little off. The back knee is slouching some. You can see the body line's not matched up here. It is sagging. The gap down here is minimal. I have to get someone to help me lift the door. So I guess I could do it with a jack, but I'm not worried about the door alignment right now because I'm trying to work on getting the glass decently done, which I'm thinking I actually do need to get that door aligned because I'm thinking my glass alignment's not gonna be all that great until I do, but yeah. So you see my door gaps off, so I've got to raise the door some now that I've installed the glass. It wants to sag it down. Um, this line is actually fairly close, but so this one will probably sit a little bit high to get this one right and to get my door gap right. But something I noticed on this new door that is similar to the old door is this. So this sits high compared to this. And if I knock it down to be the right, because like this, this angle here is not even right to this curvature. This curvature is a little bit deeper. Like there's more curve to it. This other one's kind of crescent, just kind of a smooth slope. To get that same angle, it would require me to knock this top down some, which is gonna make probably this window gap up here. Oh, sorry about the lighting and the shitty focus, but uh, this is going to make this window gap really tight. So the top gap of uh, the inner gap is fairly good. It's pretty much even all the way down it, so that's better than before. However, the outer gap, same issue as before. Whole bunch of space up front and just tapers, 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 tapers down to practically freaking nothing. And this is where it tears the weather stripping in the back or the belt line. This glass also sits damn near against this. I'm pretty sure that uh, weather stripping piece, which I have in probably one of these bags down here, I don't even remember, is kind of centered for the glass to come up through, not all the way over against this side. Could be wrong. The other thing is I managed to apparently strip out this bolt in here, this window stop. So hopefully I can order just one of those. If not, this track is kind of worn out. Probably wouldn't be a terrible idea to replace it. Uh, at least the little, the little felt strip I know you can replace. The track, I mean, it's just it's metal. It's not rusted out, but uh, hopefully they're not ridiculously expensive. Uh, I did look up the good belt line weather stripping. It's like 150 bucks. Sold out everywhere, of course. But yeah, you can see down, looking down the glass here. That looks fairly good. It actually gets wide at the back, it looks like at the very end, like right here. So maybe I could kick it. I tried actually pushing it. The glass is out of adjustment going inward. I might be able to take this top screw here and slot it with the, not the Dremel, but the bird tool or whatever, and get a little more adjustment out of that. Hey, puppy, you coming to hang out, puppy? Mio, Mio, what are you doing? What are you doing, puppy? Come to help, good girl. But yeah, this one, so this door, just like the other one, didn't have this hole. Well, it did have the, the hole in this outer shell. There's another plate that's like tack welded. I don't know if you can see a little spot weld there. There's another one somewhere over here. But anyways, there's like another plate that's tack welded on the back and that wasn't drilled. So I had to drill and burr tool that out. This has a little bit of adjustment left, but the main thing is this top screw and that inner plate that the top screw mounts to was like it had a gap between where the this sat, because you couldn't bring it over anymore because of this, this screw down here. 
and I might be able to play with that a little bit to try to get the angle right. I don't know, but I'm, I'm done fighting it tonight. But my door gap's fairly good. It actually sits inward a little bit. I need to bring the latch out a hair, or actually I need to just bring the top of the door out some, I think, for right here. For right here's close, right here's close. I think I just need to shift the door that way. <sighs> yeah, anyways, like I said, I'll need a hand to mess with the alignment more. It's too hard doing by myself. But that's what I'm fighting for the time being. I'm uh, finished getting that line fitted, get my hole drilled for my mirror, and then I'll have to order some more epoxy. This door did show up a little damaged. It's got a ding here, scratch there, scratch there. So I'll have to do a little bit of body work to it. And I don't know if that's rust already coming through in that little spot or if that's just some weird spot where someone touched it with their finger when it got e coated. Who knows? But. I'm going to have to get some more epoxy to re-epoxy this door, or not to re, but to epoxy this door. And then I guess I'm going to start doing like odds and ends bodywork spots back on the car. Like, you know, this terrible slot back here, uh, these quarter extensions that I think I'm just going to mold onto the car. These holes back here on the extensions and the trunk that I'm probably just going to epoxy and fill and bondo because I don't think I'm going to use the... I think it was like the deluxe trim where they put little chrome strips on everything. I really don't want to chrome the car, so I'm going to do away with those. But I'll start working towards that. And then the never ending uh, money pit of things I need to buy, like the Shelby nose that's ridiculously expensive for some fiberglass. The hood, I still got to get the hood line, I mean the roof liner. Um, got to get new seats the transmission and clutch conversion that I want to do. If you don't know, I'm wanting to put a T56 in there. Right now it's got a T5 with a, a six puck race clutch that's not enjoyable to drive on the street. And I'm starting to wonder if it's got other issues because I really don't think it should be chattering, and, or not really chattering, but it's more like knocking the rear end because it's wanting to, uh, for lack of a, a way to describe it, the clutch is, apparently got a lot of force on the pressure plate and it's wanting to grab and then when it starts to get too much pressure it'll slip just for a sec and it'll grab again slip but think of it doing that a lot so it's like shuddering the rear end that little bit of slop or uh play that you have in the rear end it's wanting to just hammer away at that like an impact wrench so i'm sure it's going to end up tearing up some u-joints or something doing that but yeah, you have to bring the RPMs up to like 1500 and slip the clutch for it not to do that. Or just let the clutch out exceptionally fast, which normally peels out. But anyways, I want to put a T56 in here. In doing so, I have to buy a new scatter shield. I have to get a new flywheel clutch. I want to put a twin disc in it. I'll have to change out the clutch slave cylinder to a slip-on style. So yeah, the... Transmission conversions, a chunk of change. And in doing so, I'll probably have to raise the tunnel. Um, I've heard mixed back and forth whether or not you do or don't. So I just have to be prepared to do that. Um, at that point, if I do have to raise the tunnel, I will probably do the roll cage at that time as well because I'll have to pull the seats and carpet out. And that is what's holding me back from doing the center console on this thing, which is another thing I want to do. Um, I don't want to start working on the center console in case I have to raise the tunnel can't do the cage until I have the seats so I can use the seats to set where I set them where I want. I also need to have the roof liner in before I do the cage because I don't think you can install it once you do a cage or a roll bar or whatever. I haven't decided if I'm, I guess it wouldn't be a, a full cage because I'm not doing, I'm probably not going to do a, a halo. Yeah, I think that's considered making the cage. If anything, it'd be a, like a six point, it'd be the main hoop rear sports, and then door bars. I don't know if that constitutes a cage or not. I don't remember. I have to look it up. But I know I want a harness bar, uh, rear supports, and maybe door bars. I haven't decided if I want to do that or if I want to maybe add on later. But anyways, enough of that. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make another video later on whenever I have the door settled out. Hopefully this door fixes it. And I can move on to uh, more fun things than door alignment and 
dreaded body work that I'm really not looking forward to. And my dog's apparently on drugs, doing laps. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And, uh, yeah. Hope to see you all again soon.